Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very third episode. The very third. The very third. <laughs> <laughs> very third episode <laughs> of Cool Down Timer. I am Alex Jones, and with me I have... Uh, Floyd Blackman. Floyd Blackman. It's good to be here again. <laughs> Back in my car, in your driveway. So... Guess what I played last night? What did you play last night? I played the Stanley Parable last night. And you had started to tell me about this, <laughs> uh, and then I cut you off and said, save it for the podcast. That you did. Okay, <laughs> so the Stanley Parable is this little game that, uh, well, it's a, it's a remake, full release thing of a Half-Life 2 mod from a couple years back. And... The whole idea of this game is basically just playing with the concept of linearity in a video game. Huh. And so, <clears throat> you're this dude named... I, I, I don't want to say too much to spoil it right, because it's absolutely course. worth playing. Um, but you're a dude named Stanley and... There's a narrator, and he kind of directs you through this story. But as you go through it, there are, like, he'll tell you to do one thing, but there will be another option. Hmm, and interesting. Then, and so if you actually just do what he tells you to do, the game's over in, like, five, maybe ten minutes. Um, well, I mean, every playthrough takes from between five and maybe a half, thirty minutes. Um, but each like deviation from the path, like takes you down this totally separate route that, um, it, it, it's interesting. It's fun. So a lot of replay value, it sounds like. Well, maybe, maybe for about four hours, maybe three right, hours. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, <clears throat> there, there are a limited number of Paths, endings. Or, yeah. <laughs> That sounds interesting, though. That's kind of a fun idea. Oh, it's really a fun idea, and I, I love what he did with the, the demo for it, because uh-huh. he was like, you know, I, the, I don't want to spoil any of the main game for people, so I'm going to make a completely brand new experience for the demo, and that has nothing nothing in it that's in the main game. Gotcha. And so that, that takes about a half an hour to play through, and it's it's hilarious. <laughs> The, the main game wasn't as overtly funny as the um, demo was as the demo was but the the, the main game it, it does some really interesting things huh that sounds cool I'll have to check that oh, one out oh definitely check and the demo's free so oh cool <laughs> yeah I haven't really I haven't played a lot this week honestly I can't get into anything I, did you get bored with wow no, I'm still doing my dailies and questing, or not questing, but raiding and stuff, but um, <clears throat> I'm slowing down a little bit. Good. But then again, Ringo's uh, no. playtime ran out, so I don't have anyone to play <laughs> with anymore. So he's, <laughs> he's he's not buying another month, oh, so gosh. it's a lot more lonely Z. when it's just you. <laughs> but um, I'm sure I'll play more when he gets back. Just these stupid looking for raids is ridiculous. I love that they have it, <laughs> otherwise I'd never raid, but it's it's just silly, the people you get paired up with. Anyway, though. Blah, 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 MMOs, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> no, my... I've been drawing a lot, but that's just getting me depressed, because I get to a point where I'm like, all right, I'm like looking at another artist, I'm like, so that's what he does. So now if I try to duplicate that, it looks like crap. And I'm like, ah. So I'll work and work, and I'll just get so mad. I, I I never really get super angry unless I'm playing video games or drawing. <laughs> Those are like the two things that really piss me off. Um, about the previous comment about my whole you know hatred of MMOs, I, I don't remember what it was that I watched recently, but but they were asked a question: um, Is there a game series or game genre? That no matter what you do or what you try, you just don't understand. You can't get into it. MMOs are one of those for me. <laughs> yeah. They are not my thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Though I was actually thinking, do uh, you want to try out EVE sometime? Because I've still got... I haven't tried that yet. I've got it downloaded and everything. I just haven't tried it yet. <laughs> i got to make my fake religion. Oh, I would recommend updating it because it's one of those games of that course. needs updates. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of... That's like the only game that right now I'm like super interested in. I don't, I don't know why I'm even saying this. 
That's the only game right now that I really want to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would recommend watching some videos on it beforehand so that you don't walk into it totally blind. I'll figure it out. <laughs> You'll be there at my side, <laughs> like always. <sighs> but yeah. Uh, speaking of being at your side. Good God. So I was listening over the second episode. Uh-huh. Um, to do some, you know, minor edits, clear up some empty spaces, some long, awkward pauses. We didn't have any of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I realized something. Mm-hmm. I am an interrupter. You are an interrupter, and that's not all you are. You're a snatcher, too. I know not what you speak of. <laughs> uh, Alex is the kind of person who... We'll see something that's interesting to him, and we'll take it, no matter what it is. Yeah, he's like some kind of crazed squirrel. Um, I remember it was it was a while back when we realized this, and we were sitting and chatting, and I I think it was around Christmas, and I'd gotten a new wallet or something, and for some reason the wallet came out. Your dog ate my wallet. That's and... right. <laughs> Our dog ate his wallet, and so I I don't. For some reason, mine came out. I don't remember exactly why. We were comparing it to the scraps of his wallet or something. Well, and then I got a new one. That's like right. That's what it was. Like you got week. another. Yeah. Anyway, so my wallet comes out, and before I know what happens, it's in both of his hands, and he's staring at it. And then we both stop, and he looks at me, and he's like, I'm a snatcher. <laughs> and he just kind of drops down, and he has this just terribly sad look on his face. And this is after you and Ringo had been like, Pointing out the fact that I kept grabbing yeah. Ringo's iPad. Yeah, you. Yeah, he would snatch his iPad out of his hand, and uh, yeah. And so it. He's a snatcher. It's funny, and he's an interrupter. My girlfriend has been. She she points out the snatch. She, she says, "Snatcher, the... no snatching." <laughs> you do that. You haven't done it to me in a while, but then again, we haven't really hung out that much in a while. And I remember the first thing I thought when I got my new phone was. Wonder when he's gonna snatch? <laughs> I haven't snatched it yet. You haven't. You've had it for what three weeks? Yeah, it's something like that. But you haven't it. snatched it yet. Give me a phone. No, <laughs> no snatching. That took a lot less time to talk about than. <laughs> uh, um, but now I interrupt you, and it's and I never interrupt you. <laughs> 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 I tend to just overpower anything. He's like, shut up! I want to talk. Yeah, I'm I'm generally pretty laid back. Which reminds me of a time when. So, totally unrelated to everything. Comment. Mm-hmm. Um. Recently on CSI, oh boy, Special Victims Unit. How many of... of those are there at this point? I I've never watched an episode. I, I don't have any intention of watching. <laughs> There's either three or four CSIs. Mm, Okay. And then there are two NCISs, but NCIS itself was a spinoff of another procedural. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yo, you movie, TV show people. um, So there was a character on CSI Special Victims Unit named Detective Munch, or something along those lines. And he recently retired. He is at... He is one of the key pillars for this argument called the six degrees of saint elsewhere that basically argues that because of crossovers and special appearances and whatnot um on various tv shows and how they connect to this one tv show called saint elsewhere that 90 percent of all television takes place within the mind of an autistic kid. What the frick? (laughs) I kid you not. So there's this TV show called Saint Elsewhere. Right. Old, old show. Might not be that old. I I don't know when it came out. And the series finale of this show, um, you find out that the entire show had been this extended, like, dream thing that had been in the mind of this autistic kid who had been staring into a snow globe I've heard of that this. That had the the main building that the, the thing t- took place in. But the show made use of a lot of crossovers and cameo appearances and references to other shows. Mm-hmm. And then characters that were in St. Elsewhere at one point 
then show up in other shows. Oh, weird. Um, and so there's this argument that because of that, you can connect a ton of shows in this network. <laughs> um, and Munchie, Munch, whatever, um, he started out as a character on this show called Homicide Life on the Street or something like that. Mm-hmm. And about the time that that show was ending, the guy who was heading um, CSI and was working on starting a new spinoff for CSI was like, hey, let's bring that character over to CSI so weird. SVU. So they actually brought the actual character They brought over. the character. What? That's so trippy, weird. <laughs> and then that character has been... In a bunch of other things, he was actually the actor playing the the actor playing himself playing the character was actually in an episode of Thirty Rock. Wait, really? Yeah, it was like within it was in the last season when Jenna was like trying to prove her importance to the people as the show was ending. It was like it was in the last episode, the second to last episode. I remember that and episode. And she was playing a dead body That's on an episode right. of CSI. The guy with the white hair. Oh. That guy. <laughs> so he was playing himself playing the character. Ah, even 30 Rocks connected. <laughs> That's so depressing. I love that show. Um, That's so weird. That whole, that that's just trippy. That makes me laugh. <laughs> like, all kinds of shows are connected to it. Like, Lost is connected. Alias is connected. <laughs> um, so, Special Victims Unit. Yeah. What, is that, what does that entail? I in believe that show? it has to do with sexual violence. I believe gotcha. they, there's like when the show, when the, an episode of the show starts, they get Special Victims Unit, you know, sexual violence. They have a little intro for people like you who are just watching for the first time and, you know, yeah. You don't. It doesn't matter because it's those a procedural. Shows, yeah, <laughs> those shows don't make. There's no. Those shows have no pull for me at all. I have no wish to watch them. Uh, people at my work keep talking about Burn Notice, I and I've seen. An, don't I've, know anything about. I've it. seen a couple. I've actually seen. I know Trisha Helfer's in it. Um, she played six in yeah, BSG. Yeah. No, I saw a couple episodes of it at. I think it was at the. Uh, the Fredrickson's house. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we watched, they had, they, they watched it and I was sitting there and bored. So I watched a couple episodes and it was a procedural cop drama. It seems to have a little bit more to it than most of them. But then again, I've never really watched much of any of the other ones. Yeah. Not that I want to, it's just not me. I'm not a cop drama person. <laughs> procedural or not. Yeah. I, eh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Yeah. Tequila! <laughs> so, speaking of television shows that we dislike, Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Someone recently described it as pretty good for BBC. <laughs> um, one of my friends was recently telling me about how he was at a bachelor party for one of his friends, and the people like started like crazy smack-talking him about it, about <laughs> the fact that he doesn't like Doctor Who. And, like, what did he say? How come not liking Doctor Who is the minority now? I know, right? That, that's supposed no, to be it, the nerds. It's the minority of the nerds. Right. Well, that's true. But so we are a mon- minority in a minority. Even people that, that aren't nerds love Doctor Who now. Like, at my work, there are two of us that are kind of nerdy. And, well, obviously, and, she does watch Doctor Who. And that's, um, like, the one that we disagree on. We are using the term nerd and geek we use we tend to use them interchangeably regardless of the actual definition yeah so. quit being so picky anyway i normally would be with you on this but i don't know <laughs> the difference and yeah. i don't care to know the difference but anyway so. like uh well one of the girls that i work with she is super not nerdy at all she's like 35 or so and she's got <laughs> because people who are 35 can't she, be nerdy no but she's not though and she's 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 married and she's got you know three kids or something like that and... because mutually exclusive <laughs> oh stop it anyway and she uh she hasn't seen it but the rest of her family ha- and i mean she's got like the jocks for her kids and they, they're all obsessed with it and trying to get her to watch it and i grabbed her by her shoulders and i shook her and i said don't Watch it. <laughs> Don't give in to the darkness. I'm, I'm like, it's Star Trek from Britain. <laughs> it's 
Star Trek isn't inherently bad. No, but I mean, it's that same kind of like, it's got that same kind of campiness to me. But the worst part of freaking Doctor Who is just the silliness of, it's so silly and yet it takes itself seriously. <laughs> He literally has a fix anything tool, except for like wood. It's like the only thing it can't work on, or something like that. Heck it's of been a while. man. You've seen more of it than I have. Yeah, I've seen a decent chunk of it. I mean, and and like, it's so to me, it's very repetitive. And man, we're probably pissing off like <laughs> the people in the world right now. But to me, it's very repetitive. Uh, the storyline is meh, and everything in that show. Everything in that show feels very Deus Ex Machina. I dropped my sticky note with my notes. No, oh, well, it's not like we can see in here. <laughs> we're still in the car again. It's nighttime and it's dark. Actually, we have a little more light this time because we're parked closer to his house. Yeah. Instead of like oh, 200 feet down the driveway. Mm. I'm horrible with like determining feet in hundreds. Like really? I have, I have no idea how how far a hundred feet is. That is a good point. <laughs> I have no clue. Interesting. And for yeah. whatever reason, that like talking about two hundred feet, three hundred feet, four, whatever, reminds me of one of the zoos. Like one of the zoos around here, like says this exhibit is four hundred feet that Isn't way. Isn't that like, weird? How your mind will connect something like that? Like, like for me, <laughs> like I remember, I remember when I was a kid driving through the little town past my house, and there was a marker for a hundred feet for some reason. And every time I think about a hundred <laughs> feet or any. Any intervals of hundreds of feet, I think about that. <laughs> and it's such an insignificant memory. My brain should not be storing this memory, and it should be worrying about other things that are more important. <sighs> like, weird. Okay, speaking of weird connections like that, when I played Half Life 1 for the first time, I played it like late, late at night. So, like, maybe between 3 and 5 in the morning, or 2 and 5 in the morning, something like that. And I was listening to, what was it, uh, Skillet's Comatose album on repeat. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, I could not play through Half-Life 1. But anyway, continue. Whenever I think of playing Half-Life 1, I think of that album. Whenever I hear that album, I think of playing Half-Life 1 at 5 a.m. and eating breath mints. <laughs> no, seriously, like there was a can of breath mints I had at the beginning of one of my play sessions. I was done playing for the night. I look over, the breath mints are gone. Oh, god! Like, the can is still there, but the mints themselves are just gone. Uh, yeah, I, I, pl I played a good chunk of Half-Life 1, but the style of the gameplay made me really, really dizzy. I get motion sickness really easy, and that game really messed me up. And Half-Life 2 is the same way, and I really wanted to play Half-Life 2, and I'm kind of ticked that I can't. But the weird thing is that I don't think I've ever played a game since then that has made me dizzy. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't. I just. I guess that that the first person style is maybe just matured a little bit, but yeah, <sighs> beats me. I, <laughs> but yeah, that that those games made me really dizzy. I only made it probably five minutes into Half Life Two before I was like, "Whoa, I'm done." At the time when I first played Half Life One, I played a modded version, um, and the crowbar was replaced with a saber. <laughs> She were like swinging a saber at the head. And leaving crabs. small dents in the thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, cricket, that game. Cricket, cricket. Seven minute lull. Seven. Well, let's see. Let's check the clock. That's a 20 minute lull. But again, we had one seven minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> so I cleaned the uh, back window of my house today. Like the side dun, glass dun, window. Dun. And now I can see the cute baby deer that feed in the backyard. Aw, cute baby deer. Yeah. I'm, I, 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 I try not to look at them and think about them because nature is a dick. <laughs> the circle of life the is a jerk. The circle of life. Because those cute baby deer were just... You know, sitting there nibbling on the little plants <laughs> are going to die and most more likely than not end up either on somebody's dinner plate or in the belly of a wolf or a mountain lion or something. Did I? No, I'm not. That's too depressing to Did talk I, about. I learned something interesting the other day. 
I work at a job with animals, and so I learn random weird facts about animals. Did you know that a female animal will give birth to a litter half the size of the amount of teeth that she has? For instance, a cow, a cow has four teats. She'll have one to two babies. Hmm. You know. That's a really weird fact. It's a really weird fact, but now I can't stop thinking about it. I'm like, well, how big is a litter of deer? And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I don't know why. I, I don't remember why this came up. Weird things come up at my work, though. Okay, so. <laughs> so speaking of weird things that come up at my work. <laughs> So we have this one lady that she does all like she help she she covers all the financial stuff at my work. She's really very quiet and very shy, and she's a real sweet lady. Um, so we is have this crazy old lady. Or... No, this is um, I don't know if you've ever met her. I don't think I've met more than just. I don't ever talk about her. That one too. She's the financial lady. She she's a tight watch. She covers <laughs> all the money stuff. She doesn't really do much else. But anyway, she uh, um. It was me and her at the at the main office there, and this guy comes up and he's our he's our pig guy. He brings us pigs for us to use in our our farm, and he and, and in return we give him the milk from our cow and he uses it in his pig slop. Um, and he's a very interesting person, very interesting. <laughs> he's so funny, but he just has no like inhibitions at whatsoever. He's a kind of older guy and got this really strong accent, and he's just he's really fun to talk. I love talking to him. He's hilarious. But he comes in and she, she she comes out of the office to help him with the milk or whatever. And I'm there helping him bring out milk and, and stuff. And he's just talking about impregnating cows. <laughs> and he starts talking about the size of a bull's penis. And her face was amazing. And I just stayed in there laughing at her for like 20 minutes. I was like, I sat down. I was laughing so hard. Her, She is just beat red. And he's talking about this farmer he knew that used a bull's penis as a walking stick. And like, what? <laughs> yeah. He had a dried, preserved bull's penis he used as a walking <laughs> stick. I was cracking up. This guy is so weird. I always make a point to be there when he gets there. Which side is... Which side would he use the top? I have no idea. I have this terrifying mental picture, though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Sorry so. for the mental image of this week's episode. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this week's episode brought to you by Joe's Taxidermy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <sighs> so funny. Things you learn at work. Man, I have a weird-ass work, though. <laughs> That's the truth. That's what you get for working at a historical reenactment place. Well, no, it's not really a reenactment. But it, it's a, it's a, it's a hands-on museum. That's what a we hand, are. A hands-on museum in the middle of nowhere by a hick town. <laughs> yep. Yep. With racists. Yeah, I don't know. I've never, <laughs> I've never experienced racism there. But then again, I'm. Well, but then again, you aren't I'm a the white one. So. Half Hispanic youngling. Who found out that they were taking lessons from the wife of a white white supremacist pastor dude? Yeah, we left very quickly. Yeah, <laughs> <sighs> but don't on, throw the rest of them in there just because of those people. They live on Lynch Creek Road. <laughs> <laughs> of course they do. Of course they do. <laughs> Gotta admit it's almost poetic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I was I was going through town for a wedding two years ago and I was like, huh. I'm, I'm gonna go drive by that place, Lynch Creek. Yep, of course. Sounds about of right. Of course. <laughs> they paid to have the road changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and Lynch Creek is by the gun range. <laughs> that is wonderful. <laughs> so we had our um, we had a kind of our big once a year celebration at at my work the other day that it Yay! celebrates the uh, the. Um, birthday of the woman who started the the farm um and they do all these pioneer games and we have a hatchet throwing there and i'm like dude i used to throw hatchets all the time so i go up to throw the hatchet and we were we were trying to figure out the range for throwing the hatchet and so i'm like here let me go try i used to do this all the time i break the hatchet on the first throw oh, so being us we have like 12 hatchets at the farm <laughs> so we get another hatchet and um and I was told not to throw any more hatchets. 
<laughs> but the very first person goes up to throw the hatchet for the actual games, breaks it on his first try, and we just closed it down. Just, just close it down. Just <laughs> done. But yeah, it was it was pretty fun. I remember hearing stories about like when we would be talking on the phone and you would be just I'm just throwing knives at a tree right now. Yeah, I had no. It was actually at logs uh, over where our log pile was. I would just get a great big log and I'd sit that out in the front. And then I'd use the rest of the logs as a backdrop so I wouldn't lose my knife. And I had these big, uh, I was in Scouts, and we actually made a, a knife. We had someone who had some kind of like crazy metal laser cutter thing. And they, we drew out designs, and then they cut them for us out of solid blocks of steel or something. And then we worked on them and grinded them down and sharpened them. And I used that as a throwing knife because it's all one piece. You can't break it as easy. And I would throw for hours and hours every day. When I was growing up, we didn't have internet, we didn't have computers, we didn't have television. I'm not Amish, but we didn't have a lot of stuff. And my mom's very against video games. So growing up, I was, I literally, that was my, <laughs> that was my summer, was throwing knives at a stump. The very, 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 very first night that I met <laughs> oh, Floyd here. That was a long time ago. It was ago. at this um, Lord of the Rings marathon, and... No, I, that was I, before the third one even came out, though. That was just the first two. No, no, it was before the, the, it came out the extended version. Correct, correct, the third yeah. one I just mm -hmm. came out. That's what it was. Um, wow, let's <laughs> take me back. <laughs> and so, I I hadn't seen the Lord of the Rings movies before. So and I, was, I loved them. I I I was watch sat sit there watching the movies, and I glance over into the kitchen of the house, and there's this kid kind of curled up by this like dim in the in the dimly lit dining room just hovering over a Game Boy Advance. Yeah, dude. And he just spent the whole night just clutching this this Game Boy <laughs> like he had never played a video game before. Because I hadn't. I think that all I had played, literally all I had played before that, um, besides some random games at like Cousin's House and stuff on, on holidays was um <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it was Age of Empires three? Two? Two. Probably two. Two. Yeah, Age of Empires two demo version. Demo. That I had got onto our crappy computer that didn't even have internet access. <laughs> and I got to play sometimes and Yeah. So yeah, no, that was the first time I'd ever touched no. a Game Boy Advance. <laughs> Except uh, well, once at a cousin's house I played Pokemon for a little bit. And now we're back to Pokemon. No more Pokemon this week. There was enough the first week. Um, as much as I love Pokemon. Did you see the new... <laughs> okay, so you know how they're, they're adding the Mega Evolutions yeah. or whatever it's called? Did you see that Charizard has two now? Charizard has two Mega Evolutions? Yeah. The, the second one. one is freaking awesome looking. He's black with blue flames and blue wings. Huh. Yeah, he looks freaking badass. Not that Charizard didn't look badass beforehand. <laughs> But yeah, I was like, oh, that's kind of fun. I'm getting that one. In entirely unrelated Pokemon news, mm -hmm. apparently in X and Y, they have a party XP system where once you get this device, it doesn't matter which Pokemon you use to fight, all of the Pokemon in your party get at least some XP. That's, that's handy. <laughs> I hated leveling up, like, back in the day, like, leveling up the, like, Metapod and crap. It's like, all right, all right, Metapod, you're gonna be a slot number one, and we're gonna go fight stuff, and I'm gonna trade you out. And then my main guy is gonna get all beat up, but it'll be okay, because I've got super potions. Yeah, those were the days. Hey, Mr. H is messaging me. Um, it's funny, those were actually, though, those games, <laughs> that's one of the few games that I feel that the gameplay has never lost anything game to the game. Every <laughs> game has been better. <laughs> Apparently, Mr. H plugged our podcast on his blog, and it was one of his least viewed posts ever. <laughs> I told him that we were doing a podcast just before we started. He's been texting me today. He wants me to play online D&D &D with him again. Since you informed me that you'd already recorded episode two and it is yet to be, yet to be posted. Hey, we're recording episode three. I'm about to record episode four. And then five through seven. Someday. <laughs> Um, so we're just talking about Pokemon. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of the few games, though, that I really think that every single one has never, there's never like, oh, man, 
you know, this game is good, but it's nothing like the first one. Like, people who play Skyrim complain about things that weren't in it from They're Oblivion. They're exactly the same. <laughs> what, a Skyrim and Oblivion? No. Pokemon and Pokemon and Pokemon. No, and the, games Pokemon. Have, the games have matured quite a bit in the gameplay. They have refined the gameplay, but it's the yeah, same Yeah, they've refined basic. it. No, well, yeah, that's true, but, I mean, they have refined it a lot, though. And, um... Like, Black and White was my favorite. I mean, I am, okay. or Black and White 2, I should so say. So, Mr. H has messaged me and says that the only tidbit I have for your audience is to advise them for their own protection that Floyd is a Sasquatch and that I am a Keebler elf. I am nothing like a Sasquatch. I'm only six foot four and hairy. And his girlfriend is like this really, really short chick. And he has. Oh, hey, look, it's Chihuahua. Um. Uh, Trinity thought, what was I? Girlfriend, short. Right, yeah, okay, so, and Floyd has incredibly hairy feet, so he and his lady friend, when they breed, are going to give birth to hobbits. Maybe, just because my feet are huge. And hairy. You know, I measure things with my feet, because they're exactly 13 inches long. <laughs> if you hear a dog barking in the background, that's Bungie the... Pomeranian that I call Chihuahua. Speaking of dogs, did you see the new Pokemon they added? The which one? It's a uh, I don't know the name of it, but it's a um, uh, poodle, and you can change the look of it. I expect to hear that in the podcast. Carry on. <sighs> yes. Uh, well, we can plug his thing. Let's plug his thing because he plugged our thing. All right, plugging. Plugging. I don't know the name of his blog. <laughs> the something Nebula. Something Nebula? Isn't the, it like Thought Nebula or something like that? Uh, Ask him. This episode brought to you by the Nebula. I don't know. Yeah, I got nothing. Oh, what is it? Do you want to just end this episode? Yeah, let's end this episode. Let's end this episode. We're ending this episode. We love you all if you actually listen to us. And if and not, screw you. You can just screw your chivalry. Screw it! <laughs> All right. That's the end. Talk to you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, also. Also, make sure to... If if you're hearing this on somebody else's anything, visit our website at cooldowntimer.com. We may, at some point in the future, have merchandise if we have enough people listen to our show. We can have t-shirts and wristbands and mugs and mouse pads and... I'm totally just BSing this right now. I know, it's okay. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> but seriously. Okay, yep. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> Bye. Oh, the off button on this. I always forget what the off button is. Yeah.